While most 10 year olds had their lazy asses plonked in front of a TV set playing World of Witchcraft or whatever, somewhere in the impoverished hills of Dagestan, a 10 year old Khabib was out entertaining his comrades by rolling around in the dirt grappling with a fucking bear. This video is just the type of meanwhile in Russia shit that can begin to explain why Russian fighters are typically tough as fuck and can at times have an almost haunting indifference to the prospect of gratuitous violence and just general savagery at the highest levels. But wrestling a bear sounds more brutal than it actually was. The reality is, the bear looks all cute and cuddly and Khabib is just playing around. To get to the root of what really makes Khabib hard as nails, there are political, economic, cultural, and geographic considerations. A good starting point, though, is the Spartan training camp in which Khabib was basically raised. While developing his skills in the disciplines of wrestling, judo, and combat sambo, Khabib lived with 15 other boys, training twice a day in an unforgiving military-style training regimen overseen by his father, Abdulmanap. Now, whenever we hear of a fighter getting trained by his father, it immediately begs the questions, who is this guy and what are his credentials? Abdulmanap began training wrestling at the age of 8 as a powerful tool for self-defense and to instill discipline. At the age of 19, he joined the army. In 1981, I joined the Russian army and participated in all sorts of sports competitions during my time there. It was a school of discipline. He then went on to study judo in one of Ukraine's top universities and fought his way onto the Ukrainian judo team. Over the next couple of years, he began collecting trophies, winning national championships in three separate disciplines, judo, sambo, and freestyle wrestling. So obviously in his own right, Abdulmanap was not a man to be fucked with. And by combining his vast experience of high-level combat sports with the rigid structure of military life, he was the perfect man to mold young minds into a bunch of murderous fucking war machines. At the heart of Abdulmanap's training philosophy is the harsh principle of discipline or punishment. In a Russian documentary, Khabib stated, There were a lot of punishments. I said to the father that I didn't want to study, he punished. When he explained to me with words, I didn't understand. With the fists, I understood immediately. So by punishment, we're not talking about taking away Khabib's Game Boy. It was more of a step out of line and get the fuck smashed out of you by a grown-ass man style discipline. This type of corporal punishment and military lifestyle may seem extreme or even barbaric in the West. But in Dagestan at the time, most young men were facing two options. A career in sports or militant Islam. So if you go to career guidance in Dagestan, you might be getting a fucking death sentence. In the Western world, we have the privilege of peaceful parenting. But there's no doubt in my mind that Abdulmanap was coming from a good place. He was doing everything in his power to equip his sons and students with everything they needed to deal with the harsh realities of the Caucasus. Having said that, even though that type of parenting is totally unnecessary in the West, when you look at some of the pathetic bullshit on college campuses these days, you almost wish you could stick some of these assholes in a container and ship them off to Dagestan to spend a semester or two with Abdulmanap. If they started yapping about campus safe spaces, then doctors would have to surgically remove Abdulmanap's boot from their ass like they're delivering a fucking baby. And the proof is in the pudding. Abdulmanap is regarded as the father of MMA in Dagestan, he's produced 20 combat world sambo champions, and at least four of his students have made it to the UFC. There are certain athletes whose story it's impossible to untangle from their mentor. Mike Tyson and Customato, for example. A big part of Tyson's success came from his reverence for the wisdom of his teacher and the humble acceptance that even in the face of enormous success, he was still the student. Well, Khabib very much has this reverence for Abdulmanap. It's shameful to offend the father or an elder. If you're punished, it means you deserved it. And it must be incredibly powerful when the man guiding your career and teaching you everything you know is also your primary motivation. After an emotional win over Abel Trujillo, Khabib stated, My main motivation is my father. 
He invested a lot of time into me. He brought me up and made a man out of me. And his happy face after the fight is the best reward for me. I cannot let him down. Khabib has stated that his father always created the toughest conditions with the stated goal of either mentally breaking Khabib or driving him to reach that next level, constantly striving to improve. Now, say what you want about the methods, but that type of relentless striving is how you create one tough motherfucker with an unbreakable spirit and a work ethic that shits all over your regular, average, world-class fighter. To summarize that whole point, Khabib was simply bred to be a savage. It's not what he does, it's who he is. When Khabib was discussing the time he spent injured, he said the following, It was like someone takes you and puts you in jail, like you were isolated. In other words, martial arts and violence is how Khabib relates to the world. Without it, he feels completely cut off from humanity. Every nation is a fighting nation, if you go back far enough. But in Dagestan, there's still blood on the soil. There's a brilliant article on Bloody Elbow describing the history of the region. Dagestan and the Caucasus were conquered by the Soviet Union in the 1800s in a brutal takeover that lasted almost 50 years. Since then, the region has played host to a series of attempts to establish an independent Islamic state, often centered in Dagestan. The most recent of these was in 99, when there was a brief conflict between warring Islamic factions vying for control of the region. The whole affair lasted only six weeks before Russian airstrikes bombed the fuck out of their asses and brought an emphatic end to the conflict. Abdulmanap believes the conflict had an impact on his children. The simmering tensions and constant threat of danger in the region placed training in a very different context, namely his preparation for the potential onset of war. I believe every man must be ready for war, even in peaceful times. It is always a topic of discussion in the Caucasus. We often hear fighters say, I'll fight anywhere, I'll fight in the street. But when Khabib says it in that calm, ice-cold, matter-of-fact monotone, you believe him. I'm sure for most fighters, the UFC is about the highest stakes they can imagine. But from the time Khabib was a child grappling with a bear, his subconscious has likely been grappling with the prospect of a fight with far greater consequences, where it's not a matter of win bonuses and title shots, it's a matter of life and fucking death. The usual pressure and nerves associated with a fist fight must have muted significance for someone whose whole psychology has adapted to living in an area of boiling hostility between radical Islamic fundamentalists. Good luck getting in Khabib's head. The guy is ice cold. He states his intentions without any theatrics or emotion, like he's simply stating a fact. Water is wet, the sky is blue, I'm gonna fucking smash you. Can you imagine the build-up for McGregor vs. Khabib? A lot was made of the confrontation heading into 205, but for me, a better summary of the two personalities were their post-fight interviews. Both were fucking glorious. Connor was his usual brash, charismatic self. Where the fuck is my other belt? Four billion dollars? Cheap motherfuckers. Khabib, on the other hand, was cool, concise, and supremely confident in the face of a hostile crowd. Beginning of year, he tap like chicken. End of year, he fight for title. There's only 6 million Irish. There's 150 million Russians. On the MMA hour, John Kavanaugh later replied, It may be 150 million versus 6 million, but when that cage door closes, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Perfect. No disrespect to Ferguson, but when you consider everything, the styles, a surgical striker versus a relentless grappler, the psychological warfare, a mouth that can decimate opponents versus an unbreakable will, the personalities, confident and overstated versus equally confident but understated. Khabib versus McGregor is my most anticipated fight for 2017. It is a glorious clash of two polar opposite titans of the sport, right in their fucking prime. 
does not get any better. If you developed a photo negative of McGregor, you'd have a picture of Nurmagomedov, Madoff, probably holding a fucking knife. The last thing I want to briefly touch on is the geography, religion, and culture of the region. In the documentary, Khabib stated, We have grown up in such severe conditions, in mountains. Therefore, it is evident in our spirit. Compare 15 minutes in the cage to life in the mountains. It is incomparable. Abdul Manap has stated, In my opinion, training deep in the mountains is an irreplaceable part of training. You simply cannot go three or five full rounds without elevation training. With regards to religion, Khabib is a devout Muslim, which as we know, does not tolerate vices like drink or drugs. If you went out of your way to orchestrate the perfect circumstances to produce a physical and mental monster, you'd have a hard time doing better than the cold, cruel mountains of Dagestan. And that is the monster who arrived on American shores. By the time Khabib made it to the UFC, he had spent almost his entire life training at altitude, under Spartan conditions, in a remote mountain town, with no serious distractions outside the terrifying prospect of civil war, while practicing a religion that simply does not permit vices. Khabib's not your average fighter, he is a fucking savage.